Hi everybody, this is Pretty Kitty. I'm here with the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston celebrating St. Kitts Nevis 29th Independence. And you're here watching Carib Scene on CAF TV. <laughs> But I'm hoping at the end of my few words that I would really encourage more of you to get involved. I heard a lot of names mentioned as being a part of the recruiting committee. And I'm hoping after a few words tonight that I would inspire some of you to become more involved. And let, let me start too by saying a big thank you to Mel and to Dennis. They reached out to me a few weeks ago, and I couldn't say no, right? This is, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit, maybe just a quick sidebar about why Good evening, I everyone. Say no. Ana Valenzuela, your host for tonight's show. Welcome to the 29th anniversary of St. Kitts and Nevis Independence. Tonight, we'll bring you the culture, we'll bring you the celebration, we'll bring you the food, we'll bring you the entertainment, we'll bring you everything that has to do with the wonderful and magnificent celebration of St. Kitts and Nevis 29th Independence. Stay tuned as CAF TV brings you another edition of Carib Scene on CAF TV. Good evening everyone, welcome, welcome to season 3 of Carib Seed on CAF TV. Tonight, featuring the 29th anniversary of St. Kitts and Nevis Independence, here in the heart of Houston. You cannot miss it, we'll have culture, we'll have the St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Houston bringing us the best of the best from home. Stay tuned as we'll bring you everything and anything that you can imagine for the best of the best, St. Kitts and Nevis. My name is Melvina Chapman O'Dane. I am the president of the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston. Welcome to you all. Thank you all very much for coming out this evening. It has been a marvelous year since you saw us here the last time. I can't believe a whole year has gone by, but it has, and it's been fabulous. I hope that everyone in this room and your extended friends and family have had a tremendous year. I would like to bring to the stage uh, Miss Gwyneth Burt. Our Father, who art in heaven, bless the people at this independence celebration. Create an interactive force amongst us, Lord, as we share our cultural heritage and experiences. As we move into another year of this growing organization, we ask you, Lord, to guide the leaders as we reach out to the community and the members of the organization for support and collegial input. Lord, there's no comparison to your marvelous work of feeding your people. You fed 5,000 people with two small fish and five barley loaves and turned water into fine wine. As we partake the meal served. May we enjoy the pleasure of being together, sharing our commonalities, 
as we dine and dance. Bless us, Lord, as we continue to develop the organization with a mission to teach the rich culture of our heritage from St. Kitts and Nevis. We ask this blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, I would like to bring to the stage one of our national treasures. Miss Maurice Roberts is a former St. Kitts National Carnival Queen of 2007, 2008, and she is going to be accompanied by Joey J. Pierre, and she will sing our national anthem. Please stand. Kids. 
He just got an appointment, number one. And again, he is my family. He's a cousin of mine, too. I've been fortunate to be introducing for the last two years now family members. And tonight, here's another one that I'm going to be introducing to you. His name is Dr. Stewart. I'm not going to give you anything about him, his bio or anything like that. It's in the book. So just read through it for the sake of time. And we want you guys to have a lot of time to dance and all that kind of stuff. We're going to um, let him do the whole thing. All right? Mr. Dr. Stewart. Thank you, thank you, and good night to Scanner and friends. Good night, good night. Good night. All right, you know, somebody commented before that we were really quiet. I couldn't understand it. Petitions, free drinks, and we're quiet. So um, let me get started. You, so you didn't know that, right? Get outside. All right. Well, I'm truly delighted to be standing before you um, tonight, and I hope to not to be reading this. I don't want to do like Dennis and get off script too much, but I might just do that. <laughs> but I'm hoping at the end of my few words that I would really encourage more of you to get involved. I heard a lot of names mentioned as being a part of the recruiting committee, and I'm hoping after a few words tonight that I would inspire some of you to become more involved. And let, let me start too by saying a big thank you to Mel and to Dennis. They reached out to me a few weeks ago, and I couldn't say no, right? This is uh, and I'll tell you a little bit, maybe just a quick sidebar about why I couldn't say no. Because, you know, if you look in this brochure that we're passing around, you will see that I'm the founder for this group. And a part of what inspired me to get the group going was my whole idea around, it's not my quote, but it, it takes a village. You know, I was contacted by the principal at the high school and I truly was in a position where I could make a contribution, but my sense was, why do I want to get up and send a check to the high school? Why not recruit some friends and build that village? And today, we have the Sandy Point Benevolent Society, and we've been fortunate, even though I like to say I'm the founder, we've been fortunate to have good leaders. And one of the things we did a few years ago was we said, let's rotate the leadership. And through that, we've been able to recruit a lot of folks and really build a village and build a bigger uh, organization. And we just had a very successful banquet with about 230 folks participating. And we're fortunate again to have Dennis come from this group and participate. Um, a couple other things. Um, so one of the things I really wanted to do tonight was to leave you with one word. And the word is radical. And I'm going to use that word to demonstrate, to give you a bit of a story, maybe a, a biographical impression of where I am and how I got to where I am, but also again to inspire you to become more involved with the organization. So the word radical. Let, let's think about Webster and the Merriam Dictionary and Wikipedia. It talks about a person with strong conviction. It talks about a person who's grounded, right, with fundamental beliefs. It talks about, if you think about a process, you know, proceeding from the root, right? It talks about designed to remove, right, the root of a disease. It talks about someone who perhaps may have some extreme views. Someone who's thorough. And the one that I really like is the one that speaks to transformation. Someone who can really participate and help in that whole transformational process. And if you think of slang, when somebody says, boy, you're radical, right? Even that has good connotation. It speaks to somebody who's excellent or somebody who's cool, right? So that's the word I want to leave you with. And you might ask, why, is that, why does that word resonate with me? So many of you are from the Houston area, of course, and if you, if you move around the Houston areas, you'll see a lot of chemical, the presence of a lot of chemical companies. You'll see huge plants, lots of big smokestacks, and, and in fact, I worked for and was recruited by Roman Haas, and I was surprised when I told Mel Roman Haas, she said, oh yes, 
I know Roman Haas. Most people don't recognize that name. But if you're in Houston, you've probably driven by and seen that name. And today, Roman Haas is Dow. And in Houston, we make a ton of bad stuff. Good stuff, but smelly stuff, right? Mon and I'm going to introduce you to two words. It's the only chemistry terms I'm going to use, monomers and polymers. And we're going to talk about this whole transformation process. So in Houston, we make mega millions of pounds of stuff. And those are monomers. And we put them on barges and in big trucks. And we need a lot of um, you know, government involvement just to move those materials around. Those materials do very little for us in terms of making money or in terms of materials that we can use. But what I did at Roman Haas was we use a radical. And in fact, we call the process of transformation from monomers to polymers radical polymerization. So we take these, I don't want to say smelly chemicals, and we move them around the world. And they got to me, my team, and we converted them into materials that are where the value significantly improved. So now we could sell those polymers and make a lot of money. And what do we sell those polymers into? Shampoos, sunscreens, hard surface cleaners, even the fabrics you wear, the way how we hold the fibers together, right? We can, with radicals, tune those monomers that we can make polymers that we can use for those applications. What's the big thing today? You hear about the iPhone 5 release, display screens, the flat screen television, those same monomers made in Houston, simple radical polymerization, we can convert them into those types of applications, right? And so I can list, the list goes on, and where I got my feet wet was in something that I, I had no idea that I would become an expert in paint chemistry. And I used to kid, joke with all my friends, right, if you stop moving, I will paint you. And if you think about it, what do you think of, you know, what you'd use personally, foundation, top coat, we use that with everything, right, from furniture, painting your homes, painting skyscrapers, painting ships, everywhere you turn, that's how my reputation was built. That's what allowed me to, to get patents, to move around the world. And again, so the theme is radical. Think about the level of that material in this big soup and how we can tune that to take something that's less valuable into something that's very valuable. The whole idea of transforming and, and moving things forward. And so what I want to do then is to have you reflect on how you could think about this word radical and how you can use that to get more involved with organizations such as Scanner. So the first thing I want you to think about is that there's many ways to lead, right? You can lead from the top, you can lead from the bottom. But no matter where you are, right, if, you know, unless you get in the game, you'll never be able to fully realize your potential and to help to build a village. And just like, again, professionally, we talk about a very small amount of material in a chemical batch, increasing the value, I want you to think about how within your personal space, you can get involved and really help to make a difference. Okay, so you can be the catalyst, you can help with your friends to propagate, to get some energy, you can begin to transform, to set goals, and to really help to transform, again, not only you know, groups like Scana, but other ways to get involved. We heard about groups from Panama and from Barbados, and things like that. So again, that's one way you could think about building a network and really moving things forward. The other message related to that is really every little bit counts. Again, so when, you know, when we talk, you know, I, the group that I'm with in New York, we have representation Cincinnati, New York, Maryland. There's a lot of things available today, right? We have free, 
teleconference, and in fact, there's one tomorrow night. So that small commitment, that dedication, that ability to be cohesive, to hold the group together, that's truly what's, what allows us to, to, to stay together and to continue to build. I would say stay focused on the big goals. So we started off, and we were fortunate to identify the principal at the high school and we said, what can we do? Let's set up the principal's award. We want it to be different. Everybody was giving an award to the folks leaving school. And we said, let's target the freshmen who are coming in. And that's what we used to hold us together. And we continue to build on that. So I heard about the gift to the police organization in St. Kitts. And we're now in a position where we've gone well beyond the principal's award, where we give a monetary award to the incoming freshmen uh, to, to doing a whole lot more to help folks, not only Sandy Point, but across St. Kitts. This year, we were fortunate. We said, let's not just give a gift to one student coming from the primary school in Sandy Point. So we broaden that. Every feeder school to the Sandy Point High School, we're now going to give an award and recognize. So if schools from Newton Ground, schools from St. Paul's, right? So again, these are the ways just a few folks coming together, we've been able to, to act as a catalyst to recruit more people to come in and to really make a difference in terms of reaching out to the broader St. Kitts community. And a couple of other things in closing. So there are a couple of, you know, people always say that great things come to those who wait. And again, remember, sometimes it's just the leftovers that you get when you wait, right? So. I'm just saying, now that you're here and you know the organization, you've seen the faces, what are you waiting on, right? Again, and just remember, every small bit counts, okay? So that's one thing I want to leave you with. So my call to action is quite simple. We're in a wonderful game of life. You cannot have an impact without getting in the game. So you got to get off the couch, get in the game. Be that catalyst. Be that radical, we talk about radical, right? Be that one that does the transforming. And again, there are many ways to think about doing this, right? Some people can see the needs and think about what needs to happen. Some folks can really make it happen. And, those who can, and some people can really make it happen when it counts. So reflect on yourself and your skills and see which part you can jump into and really try to make a difference. And remember, leadership, it's all about the bottoms up, right? So sometimes we wait because we want to be told how to get involved, how to march forward. I would say get involved as early as possible. Those are the principles that are going to take you forward and allow you to act as a true radical and make a strong impression going forward. So I want to close with those words. I know I'm the one between you and dancing. Somebody said walking up. Um, I must say I was touched by the, the poet too, um, the, and really that was also very inspiring. Again, just remember that word. Go out and be a radical. Be the one that is that catalyst. Help to transform. Get involved. And thank you. to the stage, um, Avis Chambers, 
Avis again, she's our treasurer. This year we decided that we were going to do something radical. <laughs> and what we did this year was decide that, decided that we were going to see how we could assist a student or students from the Federation or in the Federation with a scholarship. We knew that we couldn't give large sums of money to anyone. Our organization is small, we're new, we're just getting started. But with the help of our members and our supporters and our executive committee, we were able to raise some money that we earmarked for our scholarship fund. So I'm going to let Avis come up here to the stage and she's going to talk to you about how we went through the process and she's also going to introduce you to the recipients of the first Scana Scholarship Awards. Good evening. Um, as Mel said, this is the first year of our Scholarship Award program, and I am extremely proud to present to you the 2012 Scholarship Award recipients. And before I even announce the winners, I want to just take a moment to um, basically thank everyone for their generous support of the scholarship program. Again, this was just a, a radical idea that we had this year and we weren't sure how it was going to go. But it, it was through your support of the raffle tickets for the both ride that we were able to raise $1,500 to uh, award two scholarships tonight. So I want to just take a moment and just say, give everyone a round of applause for your contributions. I also want to take the time to um, thank the scholarship committee. We had Mel Ordain, Denise Patrick, and Danielle Maynard for helping us go make this process as smooth as possible and make sure it was fair and equitable for all of our scholarship um, applicants. We had 17 um, scholarship applicants, and most of them are from a college I'd actually never heard of, Midwestern Univer <laughs> um, State University. Um, it seems to be that all of them live in the same apartment complex. <laughs> um, <laughs> And maybe they heavily recruit um, from St. Kitts, but um, so through this process, I actually learned something. There's a scholarship, I mean, there's a, a university here in Texas that recruits specifically from St. Kitts and Nevis. So um, again, if you um, were not familiar with how we did the scholarship award, the scholarship was... Uh, award was eligible to any high school senior or current college student who were pursuing an undergraduate or gra graduate degree from a college, university, a trade school, whether it's in the United St States or the Federation. We actually were fortunate to have two applicants from St. Kitts and Nevis um, as a part of the process. Um, the way that we um, selected the award winner was that we had eight outside rev reviewers who had no affiliation with the organization to review each application. Every application was uh, reviewed three times and then we just tallied the scores. And I am so ha happy that I did not have to because I just wanted to give money to everybody. But <laughs> <laughs> we had a process and so we were able to uh, narrow down to our two top recipients. And so without further ado, I want to um, I want to invite Mel and Dr. Williams to come up and present to our award winner. We actually have um, our top winner here tonight with us. Our first award recipient is Dawson Douglas of St. Paul St. Kitts. Uh, Mr. Douglas was a top finalist and he will be receiving $1,000 to help in his pursuit of higher education. He's currently a junior pursuing a degree in criminal justice with a minor in management information systems at Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls, Texas. After college, Mr. Douglas uh, would like to join the St. Kitts and Nevis poli Police Force. He has previously served on the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force for three years as well as the St. Paul Football Club. He's been at Mid Since he's been at Midwestern University, he has been involved with the Caribbean Student Association and the University Program Board. Mr. Dawson, please come forward and accept this check of $1,000 on behalf of St. Kitts and St. Kitts Nevis Association of Houston.
Our next scholarship recipient is Mr. Kenroy Warner of Brick Kiln Nevis. He will be awarded $500. Unfortunately, Mr. Warner was unable to join us tonight, but he has asked that Maurice Roberts will accept his award on his behalf. So if you would come up. Mr. Warner is currently a senior pursuing a degree in management information systems at Miss Midwestern State University, and he would one day like to use his degree to provide IT services within the Federation as well as um, help an after school program uh, as a math tutor. So, again, let's give a round of applause for Mr. Kenroy Warner. <laughs> Valenzuela, your host for tonight's show. As I mentioned earlier, we are celebrating the 29th anniversary of San Quis and Nevis independence here in the heart of Houston, Texas. Wow. From home, far away, celebrating 29th year of independence. I have with me Dr. Williams. Thank you for being with me tonight. My pleasure. Here from Philadelphia. Please let me know how does it feel to be in Houston, Texas, celebrating 29th of independence of your own San Kitts and Nevis independence. It's, uh, I mean, it's uh, always a good experience to see so many um, faces from the islands and to be here for a good cause. So I think this is a group I consider it to be our sister sort of organization. Anything we can do to help to promote folks getting involved, to help our wonderful country, St. Kitts Nevis, easy for me to make a decision to come. Great, and as you mentioned, the St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Houston is a sister organization of the St. Kitts and Nevis Foundation in Philadelphia, founded by you. Talk That's to me a little bit more about that process. Well, we got together over 16 years ago, we started small, and really a group of friends, and we've since grown well beyond that. But we wanted to put our, our heads and hands and pocketbooks together and build a village, right? Be better able to support. Uh, we started with the high school, and we've done many. Um, we've had many opportunities to contribute to other other um, other groups within St. Kitts. We've helped the church. We've helped. You know, there's one cricketer we're helping this year. We've reached out to folks who. Um, suffered loss, for example, with fire and things like that, and we've um, stepped up and made contributions there as well. Wow, 16 years of promoting culture, embracing the St. Keith and Nevis culture, starting at the high school level. Yep. Yeah, and it was easy. How do you get people together? I think the high school anchored us. We were all alumni of the Sandy Point High School, and from that point we've been able to grow and we're doing a lot more well beyond the boundaries of the high school in the community. Mm -hmm. And definitely be able to help back home. You mentioned with um, victims of fire and different, um, different disasters that St. Kitts and Nevis, ha and Nevis has experienced. The Philadelphia uh, St. Kitts and Nevis Association has been present. Yeah, and let me just hold this up and uh, show you what we are called. So we are the Sandy Point Benevolent Society. And this is our second uh, publication that we've developed. Uh, this year and uh, I think this speaks loudly about our ability to reach folks and it's a very professionally developed document and um, so I think this is this is just one example that really uh, demonstrates our commitment and our ability to reach out beyond the high school. And as you mentioned commitment is a big word commitment, unity, um, a ability to um, through our communications, through our helping the community, brings the community together, brings high school students, college students, and the whole community united to continue embracing our culture. Absolutely, and we were, you know, this year we had 
participation from the Prime Minister, for example. So to have the leader of the Federation participate speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. And we've had some very distinguished honorees for the last couple of years. And so we're, as we do this more and more, we're even more empowered to grow and to do even bigger things. So we're really looking forward to having a fantastic 2013. And um, again, I think it's a matter of the personal commitment, the paying forward, and demonstrating to the broader community that they can get involved and, and be even more impact, help us be more impactful. And the fact of being impactful comes to mind the term that you, you use, being radical. Yeah, and you know, as I'm here on camera, I'm a shy guy, right? <laughs> but um, but I, I know this group has helped me develop and, and lead and develop some um, more confidence as you know, with success and more success, you get more and more confident. And we're hoping to do that with other folks as we enlist people to come in and give them leadership responsibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how, and it also means that even though you're small and you're starting small, it, it's, it's okay. What you say, what you do can inspire others. Mm -hmm. And by bringing more people in, you're absolutely influencing and, and creating change. So that's, that's why we're encouraging folks not to think about la just landing on the moon, but there are a lot of things you have to do to get there, right? Mm -hmm. Hello That's everyone. We continue to celebrate the 29th anniversary of St. Kitts and Nevis Independence here in the heart of Texas. I have with me Mr. Terry Lane from the Panamanian Association in Houston. Yes. And pleasure to have you with us today. Glad to be with you. Thank you so much. One very interesting thing that I would like for you to let us know how did it came about is the collaboration between the Panamanian Association in Houston and the St. Kitts and Nevis Association. Great job done together last year and this year as well. Yes, yeah, we did, we did. Actually, uh, how we did that was under the note that we will co accomplish more by coming together in groups and uh, supporting one another than trying to get things done on our own. And in fact, our speaker earlier said that in his own way, that we should radicalize our, ourselves into moving forward and bringing people along. Well, uh, seeing that the Panamanian group, we had some difficulty in getting started in projects ourselves. St. Kitts and Nevis were having the same kind of problems. So I suggested to uh, Melvina Ardain, the president of, of the association, that we tried something together to see how it worked. And we, we did, uh, we did. I think it was a boat ride, and then we had another activity, um, whatever, I can't recall right now. Mm -hmm. But whatever we did, it was successful. Maybe it was the novelty of coming together and meeting new, new people. Uh, certainly the boat ride was, 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 was a different and, and kind of enjoyable thing for us to do. But the whole notion of working together uh, and um, you know just bringing ourselves into a greater force to have a greater impact in what we do. I think it's a model that can work for most if not all of the associations here in Houston because we we are for example we spend a lot of time and energies and monies trying to get things done and they're not always successful because of small numbers and because people are planning different activities on their own so if we came together and sell it we're doing the same thing for, for the most part anyway uh, so if we can, if we can do that within ourselves and among other people, other groups, I think that's the Hello way to everyone. go. Hello everyone. We continue celebrating 29th year of independence. I have with me Ms. Sharon Hodge, the Director of Community Relation, Re Relations of San Kiza Nevis here, uh, Association here in Houston. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be here celebrating with y'all. Uh, I'm absolutely excited about it. Please tell me, how do you feel to be celebrating 29th year of independence here in the heart of Houston? Well, uh, first of all, um, again, my name is Sharon Hodge and I am an American petition. <laughs> Very good. What a mixture. Talk to and me a little I'm bit more about that. I'm really excited about the 29 years. Um, I've read a lot of history about St. Kitts. I've fallen in love with St. Kitts Nevis. And it is truly 
the sugar country, or the sugar island. <laughs> um, um, I'm really excited about, like I said, 29 years. Um, here in Houston, we have a small co community of uh, Nevisions and petitions, but we come together and we do a lot of really good things, a lot of big things. Okay. Um, and among those big things are community activities here in the Houston area, mm -hmm. but also back home. Yeah, home too. Tell me a little bit more about those activities that the St. Keith and Nevis Association is doing here. Okay, here um, we try to get involved with, with the community. Uh, we've done um, the Houston Food Bank here in Houston. Uh, we did the, um, I'm thinking, we did the um, Ronald McDonald House. Um, these are children that are terminally ill. We kind of partnered with Southwest Airlines and we came together and we helped to feed them and talk to the families and um, do whatever we could do to help serve them. And this is something that they do like every, um, every other month and we will be involved in that um, throughout the year. Um, what else have we done? Uh, we also, I'm trying to think of, it was uh, the Builders Association. Mm -hmm. We actually helped with um, uh, raising money for the Playhouse and these are for, uh, the money would go to homeless people. So we we get involved. Wow, yeah. definitely the same BC throughout yeah, we the actually, year. I actually look, I seek out and look for who needs help. Okay. And I just get in there and I just say, hey, let's do it. Let's bring everybody together and we're going over there to help this month and next month we're going there. Next month we're going there. Excellent. <laughs> definitely very busy, the St. Keats and oh, yeah. Association of Houston. Tell me some of the um, activities or some of the help that you have provided for people back home. Back home, okay. Um, St. Kitts, uh, St. Kitts Nevis has a um, children's home in St. located in St. Kitts. It is an uh, orphanage, and I had the privilege to live in St. Kitts um, um, about a year. But I've been going to St. Kitts and Nevis for about eight years. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, there was a home called a children's home, and I was able to see children go to school and come home every day. And there's this one little girl that I always kept my eye on. She, um, she couldn't see out of one eye, and her sh she would always have shoes that were, were broken. And this was before I became um, a member of the association. And when, we, when, I, when I became in the, as a member, um, I remembered her. So when we did the barrel, I made sure that that little girl, she got glasses, she got shoes, um, and of course all the, the other children got things too. But I always remember her. Um, what we're getting ready to do this year, um, we're going to pack the barrel. The name of this thing is called Pack the Barrel. Um, we packed the barrel last year. This year we're going to pack the barrel again, except for we're going to do it for the Flamboyant um, Nursing Home in Nevis. We're also going to do a barrel for St. Kitts, uh, it's St. Kitts um, Association of Disability. So we're going to do a couple of barrels and we're going to do one for St. Kitts and one for Nevis. Right, definitely. <laughs> Sorry to get so wordy. <laughs> and it's okay because even though within the wording and everything that you have said, we are able to see the effort, we're able to see the heart that is put oh, yeah. into being able passion. to help. Passion. Oh, I definitely. love St. Kitts News. I definitely. love it. Definitely. <laughs> have you ever been to St. Kitts? No, ma'am, I haven't. I oh haven't, God, but so since beautiful. last year that I was here, uh, uh, it was the first um, um, independence party that I covered for CAF. Uh -huh. and I put it in my list that that's some of the places that I'm going to be visiting. St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbados, Jamaica. Um, San Lucia, yeah. of course, mm -hmm. and Dominica, Dominica yeah. and of course my lovely island, the Dominican Republic. <laughs> I'll be going back Absolutely. home. So that is in my future and I'll be coming back for references. Where should I go? Okay. So I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely I commend the Destin Keys and Nevis Association of Houston because we can see the passion. Yeah. We can see the, the hard work and Absolutely. effort put into helping not only the community here, but also the community back, back home. And that is part of what embracing your culture means absolutely you know being able to provide mm -hmm. for people here mm -hmm. and back home as well and that's yeah. what we all try for and they're not forgotten just because we're here in the states we have not forgotten very good so with those words 
even though we're here in the States, we have not forgotten our homeland. That's right. Thank you so much, Thank Sharon. You. It's a pleasure to be here. And definitely, I will be calling you when I'm <laughs> booking my trip to San Quisa okay. Nevis. Okay. Stay tuned as we will continue to bring you more from the San Quisa Nevis Association of Houston 29th year anniversary of San Quisa Nevis independence. Hello, everyone. We continue to be in Houston celebrating the 29th anniversary of San Quisa Nevis. I have the pleasure to have with me Miss Melvina Schapner, the president of this wonderful San Quisa Nevis Association of Houston. Melvina, thank you so much for being with me tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me. Before anything, let me congratulate you for a great effort put together on celebrating the independence of San Quisa Nevis here in Houston. Thank Talk you. to me a little bit about the process of coming to celebrate the second uh, the second year St. Kitts and Nevis has celebrated independence here. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. This is our second year that the St. Kitts Nevis and Association of Houston has celebrated the independence here in Houston. And we are really excited to do that, yes, and to bring all of our nationals together, as well as people from other countries, to celebrate our milestone with us. Awesome. And as I have seen, i seen the music, i seen the food, I, we've seen traditional um, dressed wear from San Quisa Nevis, so definitely bringing culture together to celebrate you know, a milestone of 29 years. Yes. How did that process came about? Well, this year we wanted to do something a little different than we did last year, and we did want to bring the cultural aspect into our event this evening, and that is why we had a former Miss St. Kitts Carnival Queen that came in all the way from Wichita Falls, where she's attending university, as well as the two young ladies that you saw modeling our national dress. Mm -hmm. And definitely brought that um, cultural aspect and le let us be able to embrace this uh, Kings and Nevis culture here in Houston, Texas. Definitely a big piece of what means to be culturally diverse as, as well as embracing our culture. Yes, definitely. You know, there's a lot of effort put into a lot of events by a lot of organizations. Um, and we try now to just bring a little bit of everything. We try to bring the food, the music, and most definitely the culture. Every island has its own specific cultural things that they like to do. And we wanted to introduce to people our national dress this evening. And we thought that that would be a good way to get for people to see, you know, the way that our ancestors lived back in the day, the type of clothing that they wore, and that effort that those two lovely young ladies tonight brought forth. That was absolutely wonderful. Yes, indeed. And I like that you mentioned other organizations, how, you know, uh, we all celebrate our independence and celebrate different aspects of our culture. But one very interesting thing that I found today is the collaboration of San Quisa Nevis with the Panamanian Association. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, you know, there's strength in numbers. And both of our organizations are new and small. And we thought, what better way to bring two organizations together than to collaborate? So we approached the organization um, about assisting us with, you know, trying to get off the ground. Um, Terry Lane mentors me and helps me, you know, to get in the right direction. And, you know, kind of helps me a little bit in how an organization should be run, things like that. So I thought that that was a natural progression to go ahead and have that organization work with us. And it's worked out absolutely fabulously. We have now done three events with them. And I definitely see everything is started last year. And I heard wonderful things about that boat ride that happened this year. Yes, yes. We had our first um, summer boat ride, um, which was in July. And um, we sold out the ship. 126 people from both organizations came aboard and we had an absolutely fabulous time. And definitely, I am sure culture, music, food, oh, everything yes. was embraced in yes, that activity. It was. And it has to do with unity, the strength of the both organizations that came together and the support from 
people from both organizations and other organizations as well. Yes, definitely. Because in addition to the Panamanian Association that collaborated with us, we also had a healthy dose of people from other countries there on the boat. So it was like a little melting pot of the Caribbean, melting one that we really pot. enjoyed, yes. Yes, yes, indeed. And so we here in the, in the city of Houston, as diverse as cities, the Caribbean population makes up a huge lot of that melting pot. Yes, and it we certainly does. Very proudly, you know, embrace our culture. Another aspect of the um, St. Keith and Nevis um, Association of Houston is their scholarship program. And I know two um, students were awarded uh, scholarships tonight. Tell me a little bit more about um, how that comes about. When our executive committee met last November to decide on some of the things that we would like to do in 2012, that was one of the ideas that I brought forward. Um, as a new organization, it's sometimes tough to find the money and carve out all the little niches in everything that you would like to do. But I felt like giving a scholarship to one or more students from the Federation, I thought that was an important thing to do. It was radical. As our speaker said this evening, as Dr. Williams said, sometimes you have to be radical. And we actually decided we have to go outside of the box. Now, many organizations do give scholarships, but they've been around a long time. They have a nice, healthy bank balance. We are struggling um, when it comes to dollars and where those dollars should best be spent in order to help our communities. But one of the ways that we really think that our dollars will be best spent is by assisting a student or more, as the dollars see fit, to assist them with their educational aspirations. Because I believe that that's our future. The young people, they're our future. So I think that that was a good way to spend the money. And I definitely, as a master level student of myself, I definitely can agree with you. Education brings, opens doors, opens huge doors for us to continue bettering ourselves professionally, personally, and also to continue to put our Caribbean heritage in present here in this in the United States as a whole. So definitely I commend you and the St. Kitts and Davis organization for opening those doors for students because it is very difficult. And the dollar signs always are a struggle for um, in us students. Yes, and we recognize that. Um, I think everybody, like the young man said earlier, everybody who has gone on to university, unless you were born with a, you know, a silver or a golden spoon in your mouth, you struggle when you're in university. Sometimes you hold a full-time job and you're going to school full-time and you still can't make ends meet. And we really want to do the best that we can for our, you know, our children from the Federation, whether they be here in the United States studying or anywhere that they may be studying, that if we can assist them based on our criteria that we definitely will be glad to do so. Definitely and it, it, it opens a lot of doors and education is um, the golden spoon you know That's right. for, uh, for the future and for us to continue to embrace our culture. Another thing that I also um, heard is how St. Kitts and Nevis Association has stayed busy throughout the year. Stay busy here within the community and back home as well. Yes. Um, I believe in staying busy. I feel if you're going to have an organization, get busy, do the best that you can. And our goal is to help people within our communities, whether it be here in Houston or back in the Federation. We see a greater need in the Federation, so that's where we have concentrated our efforts. Last year, we packed three barrels and sent them down to St. Kitts and Nevis to our children's home. Fortunately for us, we only had at that time 15 children in the home. And there were some very specific needs that the home had, which they relayed to us. And we fulfilled those needs by purchasing the items that they were looking for. And some of them were donated by our members and our supporters. And we packed three huge barrels and shipped them off to St. Kitts and Nevis so that the children there in the home could have a really good Christmas. Definitely, and I'm pretty sure that the children were very happy to oh, know yes. that even as Sharon said earlier, I'm gonna borrow that from her, we can come to the United States to get better, but we never forget our home, our That's homeland. Right. Here in the United States, but never forgotten. That is true, we don't. And that's our goal, is that we don't forget our children or our people. 
you know, it's not just the children, it's the elderly, it's abused women, you know, it's people that are trying to start their lives all over again after tragedies. It's just anybody and everybody, the disabled, anyone that we can assist back in the Federation, even the able-bodied, we were able to assist, as you heard earlier, our police force yes. by getting two specially outfitted mountain bikes for them that they now use. Our bikes can be seen as soon as you step off any cruise ship in St. Kitts because they're, they're held at Port Zante and one of them is in Nevis and those are able, you know, the the police officers are able to very quickly, you know, maneuver through the crowds and, you know, and able to do whatever they need to do with those bikes. Yes, and be able to help and provide the assistance everyone needs. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Malvina, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity of talking to you and providing such a wonderful 29th Independence Party celebration for St. Kitts and Nevis here in, this, in Houston. Well, thank Pleasure. you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you. And thank you very much for the outstanding work that your organization does in bringing the news of our organizations throughout Houston to the forefront. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. And now I hear the music inside. I believe it's time to, time party. to party. So uh, we'll go inside in the dance floor and bring you the continuation of our culture with the music. Stay tuned as CAF TV will bring you everything that is happening tonight in Houston with the celebration of the 29th anniversary of St. Kitts and Hello. Tonight has been a wonderful night. I am so pleased to tell you that today in Houston we have celebrated the 29th anniversary of the independence of St. Kitts and Nevis. It's been a night full of joy, entertainment, culture, diversity, you name it, we had here. The St. Kitts and Nevis Association of Houston has done a tremendous job to bring together a collaboration of many aspects of the Caribbean culture and we've been, we're here celebrating it. Commend you to continue to embrace your culture, continue to stay together and you and look for unity to continue to push through and continue to push through and embrace your culture. Stay tuned, because you don't know where CAF TV will be next. But whenever there is a culture, CAF is there.